Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz that puts obscure knowledge to the test. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. I'm Raj, I'm from Reading and this is my amazing daughter, Jaya. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Lindsay, this is my husband, Simon, and we're from Christchurch in Dorset. Couple number three. I'm Sam, this is my flatmate, Tom. I'm from Wakefield in West Yorkshire and he's from North East England. And finally, couple number four. I'm Paddy, this is my friend James, and we're from Bexley. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> there we are. Thank you all very much indeed. Lovely to have you here. Welcome to Pointless. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He is here to grab your attention, test your comprehension, and somehow give Fulham FC a mention. It's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Lovely to see you. Um, well, well, an epoch-making show. I know. History is made today. We have this new format where you come back, you can play three times now instead mm. of twice. On podium one, Jaya and Raj, welcome back. Third show. Uh, and Paddy and James as well, welcome back for your third show as well. First time we've ever had it. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Tom and Sam, welcome. Uh, you're going to play your bit part in it. It's all going to be about podium one and podium four. <laughs> uh, Simon and Lindsay, welcome back. Got through to the head-to-head -head last time. But this is just their second show. Mm. You know, I tell you what, though, what if, what if Sam and Tom, the new kids on the block, yeah. suddenly fshaw, straight through, way lifting the trophy? Could happen. That's... I know, but it's in very poor form. Yeah, oh, it would be incredibly rude. Yeah. Now, Catherine and Maria were on their second show, who were brilliant throughout, and walked away with £3,000 tennis pointless answer. Really, really impressively done as well. Mm. Very, very good. So, as you've gathered, yes, Catherine and Maria, they won the jackpot. So that means today's jackpot starts off beautifully. £1,000. There we are. Yeah. So, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> now, as ever, it will be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. That hasn't changed. No conferring till the head-to-head. -head. Again, no change there. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category today is... Famous figures in science. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns first names of scientists. Richard. Yep, going to give you the surnames and initials of seven scientists on each board. Can you tell us what their first names are, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, so we are looking for the first names of these seven scientists. And we have got... L. Pasteur, microbiologist, 1822. B. Pascal, mathematician, 1623. C. Sagan, astronomer, 1934. K. Johnson, mathematician, 1918. S. Hawking, theoretical physicist, 1942. R. Franklin, chemist, 1920. And A. Nobel, chemist, 1833. I'll read those names again. L. Pasteur, B. Pascal, C. Sagan, K. Johnson, S. Hawking, R. Franklin and A. Nobel. There we are. Raj, Hi. welcome back. Thank you. Now then, is there anything that we haven't explored in the Raj backstory? <laughs> well, I'm trying to get to all the seven wonders of the world <gasps> as a part of my bucket list. Well, hang on, which seven ancient wonders? No, the, the, the new oh, the, ones. What are the current ones? Uh, seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I, I knew that. What are they? Col Colosseum. Yes. Uh, Taj Mahal. Yes. Petra. Yes. Chichen Itza. Yes. Machu Picchu. Yes. And Christ Redeemer. I've there been to the Colosseum and the Taj Mahal in Watford. I've been to... Uh, <laughs> oh, very so good. I'm, I'm two out of seven. TripAdvisor, I think, slightly overstated the case for Taj Mahal in Watford. I'll be perfectly <laughs> honest. A little honest. bit. It's a little but, bit. I mean, it's nice. It was OK. Yeah, it's but, OK. You know. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck with that, Rog. Um, what are you going to go for? Who are you going to go for? Uh, this is not my favourite subject, but I think... Go for Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur, says Raj. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Raj and Louis. Louis is right. Down that goes to 66. My start, yeah, invented uh, the pasteurisation process and fruit pastels as well. That was one of his. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Simon, welcome back. Remind us about yourself. I'm Simon. Um, I've got two little boys. Um, and I'm actually. That's good. <laughs> That's good enough. Simon, OK, what are you going to go for on our board here? Um, there's two that I'm, like, 80% sure of, but I'm not going to go for it. 80% <laughs> in an exam, by the way, is, I would say, is almost an A. That's an A, isn't it? 80%? Yeah. I'm not even sure of the one I'm going for, so I'll go for Alfred Nobel. 
Alfred Nobel at the bottom there, the chemist. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Alfred Nobel. It's right. 66 is the only score we have at the moment, and you pass it by a margin. Look at that down to 27, Simon. Very good. Well played, Simon. Yeah, picked up uh, where you left off on the last show there. Yeah, famously invented uh, dynamite, but had 350 other patents, Alfred Nobel. Could artificial leather get a patent for that? Leatherette? That's Leather, nice. yeah, if oh. you like. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Sam, you are welcome to Pointless. Oh, thank you so um, much. Tell us all about yourself. Um, yeah, so I'm Sam, 21. I am a, a recent graduate in politics and international relations, which means that I am just currently unemployed, I believe is the term. I'm enjoying looking for work in the political sphere. Which, OK, you know, that's the realm yeah. in which you're looking. Yeah. Ideally, what is the job that would land at your feet? <sighs> Prime Minister. <laughs> got just it. get that in there. Got it. OK, yeah. got it. Sam. The scientists. The yeah. scientists, yeah. What do you... Uh... Um, I'd say there's probably three that I'm sure of. Mm -hmm. um, so the one that I think is maybe the most obscure would be Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan. Yeah. Carl Sagan. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Carl Sagan is right. 27 is our low score. And 36 is where you end up with Carl. Not bad at all. Well played, yeah. Astronomer, science communicator as well, written all sorts of amazing books, won Pulitzer Prize as well. Wrote one novel, which was a Contact, which uh, the Jodie Foster, Matthew McConaughey film as well. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, James, welcome back. Thank you. Oh, old friend of the series. <laughs> yeah. uh, great to have you with us. Is there anything we haven't yet explored in the James biography? Um, so I've said so far, climbing, cooking, also yeah. into hiking as well. Bit of hiking. So, yeah, a little bit of hiking. Very good. OK. James, this board's all yours. Do you want to fill in all our blanks here? OK, so the obvious one would be Stephen Hawking. After that, the only one that I think might be right would be Borel Pascal. But I'm not too sure. I did do maths in undergrad, so I should know that. I'm going to risk it and go for Borel Pascal. Borel Pascal. Yeah. Let's see if that's right. You're getting a nod from Tom. How many of our 100 people said Borel? Oh, he's looking so good there. Yeah. Oh, bad luck, James. Undergrad came in handy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid that scored you 100 points. Sorry. I mean, you know you don't get to come back four times, don't you? <laughs> You're aware of that. You learnt two things there. James wasted his undergraduate degree. And also, Tom doesn't know what he's talking about either. That's, uh, those are the two things we've learned. Do you know that one? No. It's Blaise Pascal. Blaise Pascal. Not with a Z, though. No. It's that a would shame. be much cooler. Be cool. The French Blaise would have scored you a 13. Uh, Stephen Hawking was a pretty big scorer, as you would expect. He would have scored you 91. So, you know what, it's probably worth going for the risk. It's, yeah. it's, only, it's only nine more points. Uh, now, these other two, she comes up a lot on the show. Franklin, do you know that? No, uh, Rosalind, I know Rosalind that Rosalind Franklin. Yeah, absolutely. Rosalind. She would have scored you eight points. And the best answer on the board is Catherine Johnson, the mathematician. She would have scored you two. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. We are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 27, Simon. Look at that. Very good. Simon and Lindsay. 36 is where we find Sam and Tom. 66 is where we find Raj and Jaya. And 100, I'm afraid, is where we find James and Paddy. I'm getting deja, deja <laughs> here. Um, yeah, Paddy, we need a low score from you. But you might do it. You can pull it out the bag. You never know. You get first dibs on a brand new board there, so use them wisely. We'll come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Seven more scientists about to appear on that board. You just have to give us the first names. And we have got D. Fossey, zoologist, 1932. A. Fleming, bacteriologist, 1881. P. Higgs, theoretical physicist, 1929. I. Newton, physicist, 1642. D. Hodgkin, chemist, 1910. H. Davy, chemist, 1778. And N. Boer, physicist, 1885. I'll read those names again. D. Fossey, A. Fleming, P. Higgs, I. Newton, D. Hodgkin, H. Davy, N. Boer. Paddy, fill us in on Paddy. Yeah, so um, quite into music and I've been recently collecting lots of vinyls. Have you? Yeah. you what, a new record player you've got yeah, or is it? Yeah, all of that, the works. Yeah, and do you buy new vinyl or you go around second hand? Or... Um, also, I've been nicking those off my mum and dad's. That's what so... they're there for. Yeah, yeah. No, it's That's right. what they're there for. Okay, now, Paddy, what are you going to go for? 
You're on 100. We need, okay. a, we need a low score. I mean, uh, this isn't a great board for me, but I think I'm going for one I think I know. I'm going to go for the second one. Um, Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming, says Paddy. No red line, you're the high scorers. How many of our 100 said Alexander for Fleming? That goes down to 53. 153 is your total. Uh, he was also an artist. He used to paint with bacteria. What do you think about that? Ooh, I think that's interesting. Presumably, they, they developed as spores landed on the bacteria. It's very Damien room. Hirst, isn't it? Isn't Ahead it? of his time. Yeah. Yeah. Extraordinary. Changed colour and presumably, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Now then, Tom, we come to Tom. Tell us all about yourself, Tom. Well, um, my name's Tom. I'm a 22-year-old history student at Goldsmiths, um, flatmate of Sam's. I'm from northeast England, uh, largely. This is very vague, Tom. <laughs> Suspiciously vague. <laughs> what do you mean, the northeast of England? Whereabouts in the northeast of England are you well, from? Well, um, I grew up in Whitley Bay, yep. um, just on the outskirts of Newcastle, um, mm -hmm. until I was 12, and then moved to rural Cumbria, um, a small village oh. called Alston, and when I was Lovely. 12, and then lived there until I was 19. And then came down to London. Down to Goldsmiths. Down to Goldsmiths, yeah. There we are. Fantastic. Very good indeed. Uh, now, there you are, you're on 36. You can't lose, even if you scored 100 points, which I know you won't. <laughs> uh, you'd be through to round two. Yes, well, I mean, oh, this is awful. Um, science, that like, really isn't my strong point. I mean, my dad used to be a chemistry teacher as well, which is <laughs> terrible. <laughs> um, so I'm going to play it safe. I'm just going to say Isaac Newton. Isaac the Newton, there yes. we are. Couldn't be safer than that. Uh, no red line, you're already through. How many people said Isaac Newton? Let's see appropriately enough how far the bar drops. Not very far is the answer. 91 is good enough. Gets you through. 127 is your total. Uh, when he was 20, he made a list of all the transgressions he'd ever done in a diary, one of which was making a mousetrap on a Sunday and one of which was putting a pin in someone's hat. Naughty Isaac Newton. Naughty Isaac Newton. That's why he invented gravity to yeah. get people, because people used to call him the hat pin guy. Yeah, yeah. And he says, I've got to do something to get get rid of that name. Bring, bring a bit of gravity to the sitch. Hang on a Hang minute. Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's Isaac Newton. That's him, Isaac. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, Lindsay. Lindsay, welcome back. Tell us more, Lindsay. <laughs> Tell us more. Uh, yeah, um, so I think we said last time I'm a stay-at-home mum of two little boys, mm -hmm. uh, Alexander and Magnus, give them another Absolutely. name check there. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I also like uh, singing, I'm a member of a choir locally, we're a, uh, the Funky Little Beach Choir. The so Funky Little Beach. Down by the seaside. Yeah. That's nice. Down by the seaside, so... Uh, do, you, do you rehearse by the seaside? Um, quite close to the seaside, yeah. We have been oh, known so. to go down to the beach for a sing-song if it's uh, nice weather, but it's all very chilled. <laughs> Very good. Now, Lindsay, you're on 27. You are also through to the next round. Doesn't matter what you score. What are you going to go for? If we're through, I might go for the bottom one, which I think is... I'm not sure if it's either... I don't know if you say Niles or, like, Niles Bohr, I think. OK, I but Niles it, or Nils or something Niles like that. Yeah. Yes, we'll say we'll Niles, shall we? <laughs> see what happens. Niles Bohr, let's see if that's right. Uh, no red line, you're already through. How many people said it? It's right. I have a very good feeling about this one, Lindsay. Down he goes to 16. There you are. 16. Best score so far. Taking your total up to 43. Very nicely done. It's Neil Spore, but it's better. You might, yeah. It looks like it's spelt <laughs> uh, Niles. For the last 30 years of his life, he lived in a house that was provided to him by a brewery, and they also gave him free beer. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Jaya. Hello. Welcome back. Tell us about Jaya, such as you haven't told us before. Yeah, well, I don't know if I should admit this, but oh. I actually have a degree in chemistry. Oh, Jaya, <laughs> no! No! I know, oh. I know. Um, right, so that target of 86 points that you need to get to stay with us is achievable. I reckon it's doable. Are you feeling good about all these names here, then? Not all these names. I mean, I feel like I can get... You know, the fact that I don't do zoology means that it's fine that I don't know the first one. I think so. I think that's forgivable. Um, OK. I probably should know Higgs, and I don't, but I do know Dorothy Hodgkin, so I'm going to go Dorothy for Dorothy Hodgkin. Hodgkin. Dorothy Hodgkin. OK, now, here is your red line. <sighs> oh, Paddy and James. It's not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy Hodgkin. How many of our 100 people said it? It's right and you're through. Oh, that's 
that's our lowest score of the whole round. There we are. Three for Dorothy Hodgkin takes your total up to 69. You are into round two. Very Nicely well done. Nicely played, Jay. That turned out nice, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah 1964 it Nobel Prize winner for chemistry, Dorothy Hodgkin. Let's fill in the, shall we, the zoologist. She's the uh, the gorillas in the Miss Lady, mm. Diane Fossey. Mm. And she would have called you 26. Now, Higgs is the, is, is the Higgs boson yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh, and his name is Peter. I was going to say Higgs. Pete, just for fun. Pete, yeah, Pete Higgs. Pete Higgs. Yeah, lovely. Ten points for Pete Higgs. Uh, and Davy. Humphrey Davy. Humphrey yeah, Davy. Humphrey Absolutely Davey. right. And he would have scored you 26 points. So, Dorothy, Jaya, best answer on the board. Well played. Yeah, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. And that brings us to the end of our first round, which means we have to say goodbye, thirdly uh, and finally, it's all right. yeah. to Paddy and James. I'm so sorry. It's been great having you here. You never got to see the head-to-head. -head. Oh. Didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> this well, is that's a stroke of luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing Paddy and James. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Back to the remaining three pairs. It is now time for round two. <laughs> and there we are, mysteriously whittled down to three pairs. <laughs> Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two today is... Geography. Can you all decide in your pairs who wants to go first, who wants to go second, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many US states and state capitals whose second letter is a vowel. As they could, Richard. Yeah, simply any of the 50 US states or 50 US state capitals whose second letter is a vowel. Thank you very much. Indeed. Can't put it simpler than that. Raj, I'm just going to come straight to you. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to go for a state capital. Mm. I think it's something called Pierre. Pierre. That's, how, that's either a brilliant answer or... Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> a brilliant answer. Raj, let's see how many of our 100 people said Pierre. It's a brilliant answer, I think. That's a pointless answer. Very well done indeed, Raj. That adds £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £1,250 and it scores you nothing. Sets you up beautifully for the head-to-head. -head. Very well done indeed. Jaya and Raj are not mucking about today, are they? <laughs> it's their third chance, their last chance, and they're aiming to take it. Very well played, Raj. Yeah, it's the capital of a state I cannot mention because it also has a, uh, a vowel as its second letter. Oh, that's exciting. Um, OK, Sam. What are you going to go for? Um, so, actually, I'm, I'm quite a big American football fan. Um, so, this, that helps. Yeah, and I know there's a team that are very unique. They play with a blue pitch. They, like, dye mm. their grass blue. And that is in Boise. 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 Says Sam. Let's see how many of our 100 people said. Boise. Boise's right. Oh, down to one. Down to one, Sam. There must be another American football fan out there. Oh, very well done. Well played, Sam. A lovely answer named by the, the, the French Canadians because it was wooded. So Boise, as in uh, Bois, wow. the French for wood. And we can say where that is the capital of because it's the capital of Idaho. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now Simon. <laughs> Looking good. Pointless one, Simon. I know, Raj totally stole my answer. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, learning fast, son. <laughs> I will say Bismarck. Bismarck, Bismarck, says Simon. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bismarck. Bismarck is right. Well, our, our highest score is one. Ah, there you are, you join him. <laughs> Very well done indeed. One for Bismarck. This is very good. Really annoying to get a good answer in this round and then everyone else does as well. That's a terrific answer. Yeah, again, state capital, but of a state I can't mention, but not a million miles away from, uh, from Pierre. Pierre and Bismarck mm. are uh, fairly near each other. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Before we come back down the line, let's just look at those scores. Raj, <laughs> let's just delight in that. Very well done indeed. Beautiful answer there, Pierre. And then one for Sam and Tom, and then one for Simon and Lindsay. Best of luck to all of you. Let's come back down the line. Will the second players please step up to the podium? 
OK, Lindsay, remember we're looking for any US state or state capital whose second letter is a vowel. OK, um, I've got one in my head and I can't think of anything else, so I'm just going to say it. Um, Concord? Concord. Yeah. Says Lindsay. Let's see how many <laughs> of our 100 people said Concord. Concord is right. Oh, it's another pointless answer. Very well done indeed, Lindsay. That adds another £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £1,500. Scores you nothing and leaves your total at one. Brilliant. This is terrific stuff. Normally, we have to wait for our bonus booster round before we add this sort of money to the jackpot, yeah. but we're doing it now. That's terrific stuff. I will say, however, that Sam is the only person so far who's had the good grace to give me an answer that I can actually give some information about, because, uh, again, Concord, the capital of a state I cannot mention. I'll mention. Can't. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, Tom. <sighs> oh, I don't Goodness envy you me. having to follow this. <sighs> I mean, geography is normally a strong point. Well, it's, it's a very strong point for me. US geography well, isn't as good. It isn't as good, but Tallahassee. Tallahassee? Yes. Tallahassee. Oh. Let's see how many of our 100 people said... No red line for you, by the way. Okay. No red line, <laughs> because um, you're joint high scorers. Let's see what happens when we say Tallahassee. It's right. Oh, three! <laughs> Takes your total up to four. Three? I don't remember the last time I saw a score that big. That is, uh, <laughs> yeah, Tallahassee is the state capital of Florida. So, again, thank you. you can, I can actually say that. It's interesting because the state capitals are rarely the cities you think they're going to be, but they're, yeah. they're worth... If you're a quizzer, they're worth remembering. Worth knowing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, note to self. This lot, all over Ooh. their state yeah, yeah, capitals. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, that's the new periodic table, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is. State capitals. Yeah, state capitals. I better bone up on those. Jaya. Okay. What are you going to go for, Jaya? I am so tense right now. Um, I've got a few in mind. Excellent. And I'm just trying to figure out which one would be hopefully pointless. And I'm going to go with Salem. Salem. Yeah. Salem. Here's your red line. How far down the column do we get with Salem? <laughs> it's right. <laughs> it's another pointless <laughs> Very well done indeed. That adds another £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £1,750. Scores you nothing, leaves your total at nothing <laughs> and gets you very, very graciously into the head-to-head -head round. Oh. Very well done indeed. That is brilliant stuff. Five points between six answers, so less than a point per answer there in that round, so terrific stuff. Now, should we take a look at some other pointless answers? Uh, Oregon, by the way, uh, Salem is the, the capital of. Um, here are some more for you. Carson City, Dover, Harrisburg. You could have had Lincoln, that's Nebraska, Madison, there's Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, there's Pia, Salt Lake City, uh, Topeka, a few low scorers, Columbus, Hartford, Honolulu, Jackson, Lansing, Nashville. The lowest scoring state was Maryland, which would have scored you two. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. That brings us to the end of the second round. And Sam oh. and Tom, I can't believe it, a high score of four <gasps> is what's going to get you sent back... <laughs> To, oh to an early goodness. plunge. Literally. I'm sorry. I'm so what sorry. Incredible, it's incredible. It's been brilliant having you on, and you have wow. played incredibly well. Can't wait to see you next time. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to knock it out of the park. <laughs> uh, Sam and Tom, very well done oh, indeed. Thank, thank you. you very much. Right, for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Simon and Lindsay, Jaya and Raj. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to pay for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,750. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, let's see if we can't boost that jackpot a bit by finding some pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Tintin characters as they could. Richard. Uh, yes, six names on the board. Two of them are Tintin characters that nobody can mention. Uh, either of those will add £250 to the jetbook, but be careful. There are also two red herrings there, ones we have made up, so try and avoid those. Thank you very much indeed. So we're looking for the pointless Tintin characters amongst these six, and here we go. We have got Robinson Sucro, 
Professor Cuthbert Calculus, Bianca Castafuri, General Alcazar, Rastapopoulos and Espiritu. There we are. Simon and Lindsay, we go to you first. Do you know any? Hmm. Shall we go for calculus? Go on. Shall we go for that? Yeah. 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 Uh, we'll go for um, Professor Cuthbert Calculus, please. You're going for Professor Calculus. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Is it pointless? But well, it's right. Yeah, I'm down to three for calculus, so it's right, but not pointless. Um, Jaya and Raj, what are you going to go for? It's just a, it's a wild guess for me, so I have no idea. So Should I have a Bianca Castafiori? You're always quite good at this, let's just do it. Bianca Castafiori. Bianca Castafiori. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Bianca Castafiori. Well, it is right. Bianca Castafiori, the Milanese nightingale. And that is a pointless answer. Very well done indeed. Very good. Very well done. Now, listen, you got knocked out two shows in a row. You've given us three pointless answers in a row now. <laughs> very, very impressive stuff. Yeah, she's uh, an opera singer um, in the Tintin books. Um, are you good on Tintin? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, really? Okay, but the so... trouble is, I wasn't. I didn't think she was going to be pointless, Bianca Castafiori. OK, so what do you think the two incorrect answers are, then? Robinson Sucro and Espiritu. Is absolutely right. Both of those were red herrings, both of those incorrect. Um, and of the other two, so one of them scores points and one um, of them... Well, I would have thought... I see, I'd have thought, I thought General Alcazar might be the other point, but Rastapopoulos is, the, uh, is probably the pointless one. You know Rastapopoulos? Let's take Very a look. In... Two books, I think. Well done. Yeah. We had £250 to your fee for the show. Congratulations. Nice. And General Alcazar would have scored three. Well done at home if you said Bianca Castafiori and Arrestopopoulos. Thank you very much indeed. Well done. Well, you managed to find one pointless answer, which means you've added £250 to the jackpot and it now stands at a beautiful round £2,000. Look at that. Brilliant. But who'll be paying for it? Let's find out in the head to head. As ever, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You're now allowed to confer. Best of luck to both pairs. Your first question is all about great birds. Richard. We're going to show you five pictures now of birds which have great in their name. We'll show you the word great plus uh, alternate letters of the rest of the bird's name. But what are these birds called, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five great birds. A. Great B-S-A-D. B. Great G-E-N-A-A. -A. C. Great H-R-B-L. D. Great S-U. And E. Great S O T D O D E K R. Now then, Simon and Lindsay, you get to go first. Um, I think I'm fairly sure of C. Do you want to go for quickly? I don't. Okay, I don't think it's right. Green macaw. Um. Uh. The the second one, great great green macaw. I'll go great for. green Sorry. macaw. <laughs> Say Simon and Lindsay. Now, Jaya and Raj. Do you want to talk mm. us through those other great birds? <coughs> yeah, I think C is great hornbill, but I'm just making that up, so hopefully it fits. Um, and then E, e is great, great spotted, spotted woodpecker. woodpecker. Uh, do you think you can figure out any others? I think A, I don't know if that's a rude word or not. No. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Um, should we go hornbill? Or is that quite. Let's, let's go for E. You go for it. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're going for e, great, great spotted woodpecker. Great spotted woodpecker. Okay, so we have great green macaw and great spotted woodpecker. Simon and Lindsay have gone for great green macaw for B. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. Down it goes to 21. <laughs> Meanwhile. Jaya and Raj have gone for Great Spotted Woodpecker for E. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. And down it goes to 41. 
Which means very well done, Simon and Lindsay. After one question, you are up 1-0. Well played. There's only one answer that would have beaten Great Green at McCaw. Great Hornbill is right, but it wouldn't have beaten it. Great Hornbill would have scored you 27 points. The first one, not a rude word, Great but nearly busted. is. Great Busted. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Great Busted, close relation of Great McFly. Um, <laughs> would have scored you 23 points. And this is the best answer. Do you know this? You're pretty good on birds normally, but... I don't know that I do It's a know very that. useful word in Scrabble sometimes. It gets rid of some very dodgy letters, and it's the Great Skua. Skua. S-K-U-A. I would have scored you nine points, so well done if you said that. The Great Skua. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now, here comes your second question. Jaya and Raj, you get to answer it first, but you have to win, stay in the game, so good luck. Our second question is all about sausages. Mmm, mm, Sausages. Impossible to say sausages without saying mmm. Mm. Um, yeah, five clues to things to do with mmm sausages. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five mmm sausage clues, and here they come. We've got... Shape of Scotland's traditional lawn sausage. Keel buzzer is a type of sausage originating from this country. Canine breed from the German for badger dog, informally known as a sausage dog. Coiled variety from the north of England, which won protected status in 2011. And YouTube star whose Christmas number one singles of 2018 and 2019 both centred round sausage rolls. Jaya and Raj, you'll go first. What is that? I think we should go for the last one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? I think we're going to go for the last one, and I think it's Lad Baby. Lad Baby, you yes. say, Jaya and Raj, Lad Baby. OK, now then, Simon and Lindsay, over to you. Can you talk us through that board? <clears throat> OK, do you know any? <laughs> um, the dog. Um, yeah, the dog is one of my favourite dogs, that's a dachshund. Um, but I don't know, I think because of the sausage dog, it might be a little bit too obvious, maybe. Um, being Scottish originally, um, I know we call it a square sausage. It's not technically a square, though, so I don't know if... Um, <laughs> um, should we go for the square sausage? Come I'm not on. sure of the other ones. Yeah, I'll be patriotic and go for the square sausage. Why the not? The square <laughs> sausage, the lawn sausage being square. So we have Lad Baby and square. Uh, Jaya and Raj have gone for Lad Baby for the YouTube star. How many people said that? It's right. That goes down to ten. Very well done indeed. Let's see, Simon and Lindsay, where the square lawn sausage ends up. Square for the lawn sausage. It's right. Oh, down to 24, which means, well done, Jaren and Raj. You're back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Um, Lad Baby, best answer on the board. So very well done. Could not have been beaten. Let's fill these in. Uh, the kielbasa is Polish. It's actually Polish for sausage. Huh. Would have scored you 18 points. The K9 breed, you're absolutely Dachshund. right. The uh, Dachshund would have scored 48. And the coil variety? It's uh, Cumberland's. Cumberland's, also. absolutely. And that would have scored you 35 points. OK, now here comes the third question. Whoever wins this goes through to the final place for that jackpot of £2,000. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about items found in a bathroom in French. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you the French names now of five things you might find in a bathroom. Uh, whichever team gives us the lowest scoring English answer is going through to that final. Very best of luck. Let's reveal our five French bathroom items. And here they are. We've got le savon, la douche, le robinet, la brosse à dents and le miroir. Simon and Lindsay. Is it? I don't know. You think? <laughs> Sorry. Um, should we go for the top one then? What do you think? Disappointing B-Day is not... Do you think? Yeah. OK, we'll go for the top one and say soap, please. OK, savon, soap, say Simon and Lindsay. Now, Jaya and Raj. So, um, la douche is shower, I think. I think la brosse à dents is toothbrush. La mirror is mirror. Should we go for it? Yeah. We're going to go for toothbrush. Brosse à dents, toothbrush. So we have soap versus toothbrush. Um, Simon and Lindsay have gone for soap. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. That goes down to 50. Exactly halfway down the column. 
Jaya and Raj, will toothbrush be higher <laughs> or lower than halfway? Let's find out. Toothbrush. It's right. Oh, no, 54! 54 with a toothbrush! So soap just glides through there. And it means, after three questions, Simon and Lindsay are through to the final 2-1. Very well played. Great head to head, everyone. Let's deal with the uh, the highest answer and the lowest answer first, shall we? The highest answer, Le Miroir. Uh, absolutely right to avoid it. Always avoid the mirror. Uh, Would we'll have scored you 89 points. Huh. Now, Le Robinet is the best answer. Do you know that Le one? Le Robinet. It's a, I did uh, it at school, for sure. It's a tap. Tap. Absolutely. Um, that would have scored you four points. Now, you knew the answer to this one, La Douche. It is a shower. And would have seen you through no! to the final as well because it would have scored you 42 points. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. The pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Jay and Raj. This is it. I this know. Is it. We <laughs> knew you'd get through to the head-to-head, -head, but we very much hoped you might see the final. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, and you fell at the French hurdle. That's fine. Dear, oh dear, it's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you Thank so much you for playing. Much. Jay and Raj, wonderful. But for Simon and Lindsay, it is now time for the pointless final. Congratulations, Simon and Lindsay. You have fought off all the competition and you have won the coveted Pointless Trophy. Yay. You now have a chance to win the jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,000. There it is. Well, what a show. We've had pointless answers from you. We've had one pointless answer, haven't we? You just have to find another one of those now and you'll waltz off with £2,000. I mean, anything you'd particularly love to see come up? What do we like? Uh, we both like mid music. Mid-80s to mid-90s <laughs> pop. <laughs> oh. not, not to be too specific, but yeah. <laughs> OK, well, as always, you get to choose from the four categories we put up on the board, and we have got... Liverpool, Mercury Prize-winning rap albums, international cycle races, and authors born in the 19th century. What do you think? Um. We both like watching the Tour de France and uh, cycling, yeah. you know a little bit about cycling. Um, authors is not too bad for you. Um, uh, what do we think? Cycle races. Cycle races. OK, okay you're going to go for the races, cycling. Please. International <laughs> cycle races it is. OK, very best of luck. We're looking for the name of any city, town or place that was the start or finish point of any of the following tours, please. Uh, so any start or finish point on the 2019 Tour of Britain? or the 2019 Giro d'Italia, or the 2019 Vuelta, please. So any town, city or place that was a start or finish point on the Tour of Britain, the Giro or the Vuelta. Very, very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? As we'll ever be. Yeah. <laughs> OK, <laughs> let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Well, let's make OK. Um, um, so go OK, for... go for it. No idea Italy or Spain? Either. Can you think of anywhere? Just think of Where have we been? Spain. Like Alicante, we've been to. Yeah, um, anywhere else that we've been to that we would know? Like anywhere? It. Italy. Um, Usually small places. Yeah. yeah, and then like and mountain stages and things as well. Um, what shall we say? Do you know? Can it's you think of anywhere? Where's um, time ticking away? Um, yeah. Shall we say? Um, um, oh, some Italian skis. Um, for the Winter Olympics, we like Turin, weren't they? Um, is that going to be, uh, can you think of anything? Come on, no. we must have some cities, no. towns. I'll count to you. Yep. Um, <laughs> our, uh, Ten seconds left. Our geography is failing us. Um, can you think of anything at any other places? Uh, Rimini is an Italian seaside town. Okay, go for that is your time up. I'm oh, sorry to say, <laughs> I now need to hear your three answers. What are you going to go for? Have you got any? Alicante. So we'll say Alicante um, in Spain, just because we happen to have been okay, there. Okay, for the for the Vuelta. <laughs> uh, for the Vuelta, España, yeah. Alicante. Um, and um, places in Italy. Should we say Turin? Yeah, we'll say, yeah, Turin. We'll say Turin. Turin for the um, Giro. Rimini. And, and uh, Rimini is another place that I've heard of. And Rimini. <laughs> in Italy as well. For please. the Giro. OK, <laughs> of those three, which shall we select as our best shot at a pointless um, answer? What shall we say? Anything? Rimini. Rimini OK, Rimini goes last. Least up. likely to be pointless. Um, what was the other Alicante. one? Alicante. Alicante, Alicante and then uh, Turin goes in the middle. Yeah. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got Alicante, 
Turin and Rimini. Well, very, very best of luck. I mean, you, you certainly had to pluck those out of thin air, but you never know. If you were to win 2,000 quid, what would you like to do with it? Simon, I'm going to ask you first. Uh, well, we're doing up the house, so um, I would like to turn the um, living room into a cinema room, probably. <laughs> oh, <laughs> two grand might do that. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, Lindsay. Go, go some way towards it. Yeah. Yeah, I want to spend it on more practical things like new carpets and new curtains. Oh, and a things bit more like sensible. That, you know, but... Oh, curtains <laughs> to keep the <laughs> yeah, light out. Yes, exactly. that's an idea. Yeah, we could we could combine or them and do it. Together. Cinema. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no one looks at the carpets if you've got a massive projector, do they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Well, let's see. You've got your three answers there. Let's see what happens. Alicante. In this case, we are looking for any start or finish point on the Vuelta a España. If Alicante is right and is pointless, you leave here with £2,000. How many people said Alicante? It's right. <laughs> Alicante is only right. It's right, oh my goodness. Maybe you knew that somewhere in the back of your mind. Alicante now could win you 2,000 quid. Just has to go down to zero when single figure. Still going down with Alicante, oh, it's four. Oh my goodness, it was right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, for your next two answers, we turn to the Giro d'Italia. Your answer number two is Turin. Again, we're looking for any start or finish point on any of those stages. Let's see, Turin, is it pointless? Oh, no. Oh, I thought that sounded very likely. Anyway, <laughs> let's not worry about that, because we've got Rimini in the back pocket. Let's go for Rimini. This is your third and final answer. Your last shot at that 2,000 quid jackpot. How many of our 100 people said Rimini? Again, we're with the Giro d'Italia. Let's see, how many people named Rimini as a starting or finishing point? Oh, oh bad luck. <laughs> oh, very well done. Well, Alicante was a great answer, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot, but you have been fabulous. It's been lovely thank having you. you on the show. And remember, you get to take home a pointless trophy as oh, well. So that's all good. You. Yeah, played it the right way and tough. If you know about cycling and stuff, that's not the first thing that would come to mind. Let's take a look, shall we, at some of the pointless answers. We'll start with the Tour of Britain. Mm -hmm. These would have been pointless answers. You could have said Altrincham, Berwick upon Tweed, Gateshead, Warwick, everything. All the starting and finishing points, apart from Manchester, Newcastle, Glasgow and Birkenhead, everywhere else is pointless. Very well done if you said one of those. Let's move on now, shall we, to the Giro d'Italia. As uh, Como, Modena, San Marino, Treviso, everywhere there, pointless apart from Verona and Bologna. So it's kind of unlucky that uh, Turin and Rimini weren't there. There's all sorts of different <laughs> places there. And the Vuelta, you could have had um, Andorra La Vera, the capital of Andorra. Stay started there. Benidorm was a pointless answer. Toledo, Torre Vieja. And the only ones that scored points there were Madrid, Alicante, Bilbao and Oviedo. So very well done if you got a pointless answer at home and un unlucky in the studio. Well played. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Simon and Lindsay, thank you for playing. I'm sorry you didn't win the jackpot today. That'll ever roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £3,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>